Good afternoon, everyone. Strangeness over Antarctica, a sudden stratospheric warming event rare for the southern hemisphere. About once every 22 years, now compressed once every three years. What's flipped and how it's going to affect us moving forward. And we're going to start you on our favorite continent here, as you see the red down to the south and west. Undersea volcanoes melting an enormous amount of ice. But you're looking at that little white dot square in the center of the continent. Why would I bring that up to you? Impact of sudden stratospheric warming event on southern hemisphere also bleeding over the northern hemisphere weather patterns. I'll show you exactly what I mean here in just a second. You're looking at the red box and that massive spike in almost instant heat. Well, that's a high pressure system that invaded and broke apart the cold and will make that spill out of the Arctic heading north. And as you see, South Africa are going to be taking the Double hit on this as we move through the middle of the month. There's August 5th for you. Polar air drifts further from Antarctica as this high pressure pushes the cold literally as a cue ball, boom, out of the way, and it just gets smashed, and it's got to move somewhere. So it's going to move into latitudes where Arctic air normally is not. So directly over the center of Antarctica here, you're going to see that massive amount of heat that is a high pressure system that snuck in and has now broken apart the Antarctic air cap for a better term and has split it into different vortices that are spinning like a well helicopter rotational blade or an airplane propeller moving around the southern part of our planet and we'll watch it move it's starting to get some nice formation in there now you notice the heat then the cold and the heat and the cold and you get this oscillation and for a better term, what you get is this invasion of really warm air pushing everything out. It is a high pressure system. But once that air mass moves in, the cooler air needs to move. Australia, luckily, a little bit warmer for now. But notice the dark purples where they're spinning. And we can see one just to the east of South America. You'll see that wave in there. And it's just starting to crest into South Africa, which is this temperature anomaly that you're seeing right here. This will be on the 5th, and that's the beginning of that blob of air as they rotate across the Southern Hemisphere. And we're going to move forward a little bit. There's going to be a second inundation on August 14th, according to the models. And you can see where you... And it actually looks like a comet's tail in front of a comet there of heat moving into. And it's just a continuous influx of heat over this Antarctic dome. Interesting how it continues for such a long period of time. But one thing I wanted to bring to your attention as this second wave right around the middle of August swings through, one of the most intense spots is going to be from that triangle from Swaziland to Pretoria down to Lesotho and somewhere in the middle there. The damage will be done. So please prepare for this. No joke. It's Temperatures that have not been seen in 150 years are coming your way. President Trump warned the U.S. dollar is crashing and will no longer be the world standard. BRICS attracting more and more countries and moving away from the U.S. dollar. A global de-dollarization trend accelerates. Gold is security in times of uncertainty. Call the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. And Patriot Gold Group has an OP for Life IRA where your IRA or 401k could be in physical gold or silver. No fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Give them a call 888-546-7020. And now on with the video. Now if we look at South America and off of South America, out into the Atlantic. At the very bottom of the graph there, you can see 40 West. That's one of the waves, and we saw that on the chart before. The uh, cold going to be hit. Obviously, they're passing, but look at the cavitation in the atmosphere. See it pretty cleanly there, but as we move forward, it really starts to 
take form on its way to South Africa. This is on the 9th, and as that does spin, that's previously where that next record cold will wind up. And here is the 9th, so if you look off of South America, it's the top right up there in the corner, you'll see that dark purple blob. That's exactly the cavitation and the gyration that we were just looking at right there. So you can go wide view, closer in view to take a look at some of this. Now, cold wave alert for Australia, even though they're not getting hit as much as the other continents, they're still putting out widespread frost outbreak advisories, warnings, etc. But that second wave is really where they're going to get hit because this is the leading cold frontal boundary that's spun off of that sudden stratospheric warming event. And the middle of the month is going to be very cold and very exciting for the southern part of our world. Now, if they're looking at something like this already on a very, very minor effect from this, wait until the major effects come, when some of these higher latitude spillovers occur. And what I mean by that is, again, off of South America, just where the South Atlantic anomaly is, no less, what do we see? The most massive pocket of cold air is getting thrust further north toward Brazil. Now, not sure where this is going to land because the models, I can only take it out to the 17th, 18th. Ryan Maui's weathermodels.com giving us these charts here. Thank you, Ryan. But we shall see where this goes and where that blob goes. Record cold follows, especially in those latitudes. So you can see this is a rather significant event. Not that it's on a pattern in itself 22 years, which is also interesting that two cycles of solar activity solar maximum solar minimum two cycles of that is approximately 22 years so there's a lot of overlapping numbers that make uh, you know some correlation there but this is going to spill into well the spring for the southern hemisphere and it's expected to come over the equator and start affecting some of our systems here in the atlantic ocean as well with that cold blob coming at least that's the analysis so we have all these geopolitical events, and now we have some monster weather events in that are going to push or pull. I'm curious, when it comes above the equator, that disruption that's heading directly into where the hurricane formation is off of Africa, what this is going to do and what strangeness it will cause. Because I did look it up for you, how frequently are Antarctic sudden stratospheric warming events, SSWs, they're very, very common in the north. So we get these all the time over the Arctic, all the time. But in the south, not so much. So the last one was, what, 2002 and then 2019. And then we get that, you know, four-year break, and then it pops back up again. So what's the frequency change that just occurred? If it was 22 years, then it shrinks down to four years. I'll be generous to say five. Uh, something's kind of fallen out of its pattern there. So I'll take it back to the 2002 event. Follow that green line. Springtime, southern hemispheres. We're heading into our winter. Well, it's late spring, actually. So here's the current. If I look at the red box, and we can see that there's been some strangeness with the temperatures also. And as we march forward, here's really where the rubber meets the road on this. And... With all the strange workings and happenings in the world and everything off kilter anyway, it's, it, seem like, it seems semi-apocalyptic where we're heading to. Now, you're going to start to see things in the skies occur. I talked about this many a year ago saying you're going to see plasma displays in the skies. Well, this very well could be it here. But you're going to need to look at the right time of the day. So off the geophysical research letter, so what they did was they looked at the impact of the September 2019 incident. And after many measurements with our most modern instrumentation, they came up with the conclusions that nighttime ionosphere is strongly modified, meaning radio signal is, well, affected. And what part of the atmosphere are they talking about? Well, they're talking about the Appleton layer, the F layer. And then you can go way higher up outside the ionosphere into the way, you know, that border of space there and you get into the F2 layers. The higher you go up out towards space. You know, these different layers take on different electrical signatures within them. And electrical possibilities as well, potentialities. So another thing that was noticed was this. was a strong decrease in electron density in the nighttime and pre-sunrise ionosphere. So we're talking about that same height 
right bordering the edge of space, that literal electrical connectivity barrier or interface between our lower atmosphere and space when it comes in to connect before we get down into what we consider the troposphere where all of our weather is. There's an electrical boundary in between there that drives systems. And there's also dramatic changes observed at local sunrise, higher latitudes, and a sharp decrease in neon. So if you're looking in the center of the planet, would be looking to the right or to the east, and that is sunrise. This is the exact location that they're talking about to look for anomalies. So while you're standing there, as the sun starts to come around and excite those boundary layers, you're going to be looking higher up to the east skies at sunrise to see what kind of anomalies would be. And they actually pointed out here pretty well those very dark red at the mid-latitudes you can see it here also, NASA got it did from the space station, they're showing the ionosphere with the interaction there and the electrons. That red band right there is exactly what I just showed you on the chart. So let's do it again. This time we're looking west at sunset. And this is all Icon satellite, this data here. So if we're going to be looking west and the sun is already transit around, it's going into sunset here, we're looking at the exact same phenomenon and location in the atmosphere. You're going to be looking mid-latitude, high as the sun sets, and as you're piercing that veil, for a better term, looking off the edge of our planet out into space, you should see some strangeness. Now, the, the collapse and downwelling of neon, not really sure what that will do, but my mind on the magnetic field lines that are rolling in that are also affecting these very same spots that are also in the mid-latitudes. So just add another check mark and a list of strangeness as we move forward through the rest of the year here. At least if you see something, you'll know why it's happening. And this is starting to make more news. Once the cold hits, and they're going to have to talk about it more. But I'm wondering how they're going to add in the Tonga eruption, in the Hunga Tonga eruption, water vapor, and this disturbance here with strangeness in the upper atmosphere as we come into sunrise and sunsets. Appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Share with your friends and family. See what they think. And, well, prepare your winter gardens or your autumn gardens. It's go time. Bye for now.